praise the Lord. Well, thank you, Ray. That was... I had a conversation this week with somebody about worship and how we tend to qualify the music and validate the music and we say, oh, that was good, that was good worship or that was bad worship or that the worship over there is better than the worship over here. And I, I stand uh, in, in this position that it is never up to us to determine what good or bad worship is because the audience is God. We're not singing horizontally, we're singing vertically. And as long as we're glorifying Him, it's good worship. As long as we sing from our hearts to give Him praise, a sacrifice, an offering of praise and worship, and God receives it and He's honored. And, um, but that was good worship, right? <laughs> it was good to worship the Lord. Amen. Good to see you all in God's house. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, moms. I, um, I'm going to share this morning, um, th this, this is working, right? Is this working? Okay. Um, you know, on, I, I've said many, many times on Father's Day, you could talk about bowling, you could talk about tithing, you could talk about mission, you could talk about anything on Father's Day, nobody cares. Mother's Day, you better mention mom. <laughs> um, but it's not a typical Mother's Day mes message, I'll just tell you that as, as I was doing my daily reading, I was reading through uh, First Chronicles, and something stood out, and I want to share this message with you. The title uh, of the message is From Pain to Plenty, and uh, my text is First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. In fact, um, yeah, 9 and 10. If you have your Bibles, I'll just give you a moment to turn there, or open the app, or whatever it is you do. First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. <clears throat> and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Now, I don't know if you remember, maybe 20 years ago, the prayer of Jabez came out in a book. It was everywhere, and everybody was teaching on the prayer of Jabez and preaching on the J prayer of Jabez, and Paul Balak wrote a song, the Song of Jabez. Um, I, I looked at this uh, reading through the gene genealogies, and I, and I came upon this man Jabez. Now, genealogies, for those of you who read through the Bible, uh, reading the genealogies is the least pleasurable part of Bible reading, right? Let me be honest with you. You know, such and such begat such and such and lived so many years and died and then somebody else came along and, and you're reading that. And the only, the only real interesting part of it is just trying to pronounce the names. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? It's, it's the only thing that catches your attention. Otherwise, you just kind of blow past the names because, you, you know, there's nothing really that stands out. Well, there are a few names in the genealogies that do stand out. In, in this First Chronicles, chapter, uh, chapters 1 through 9, there are some 500 names listed. And really, there's not much to be said about most of them, but of those 500 names, in this long list of names, there are some kings, and there are some priests, there are some warriors, but Jabez stands out as a man of faith. Now, we don't know the names of his parents, and this is odd, because the whole purpose of genealogies is to, is to explain the generations. You know, this one begat so many and lived so long and, and so forth. And so we, we look, so most often we see the name of the father, or in some genealogies we at least have the name of the mother. But in the case of Jabez, in this list of names, we don't know mom or dad. We don't know his parents' names. So it's Ezra who wrote this doesn't give us 
the names of the parents of Jabez. He just stands out as being different. Now since no father is mentioned, it may be possible that he died before Jabez was born. Now hear me, we don't want to speculate too much here, right? I don't, I don't believe in speculating when it comes to the Word of God. However, the context might offer a suggestion to this point. His mother named him Jabez. Now, Jabez, the name means one who brings sorrow or pain. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> you ever hear some, pe some people's names and you say, what were the parents thinking? Jabez, one who brings sorrow or pain. That's my name. That's what I have to live with for the rest of my life, that I brought my mother sorrow and I brought my mother pain. Thanks a lot. But now we know, and we don't know in detail what that sorrow or pain was. Now we know what the scriptures say. We know what God said to Adam and to Eve. He said that in sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. So Jabez, Jabez's mom had sorrow in childbirth, but, but that would, that, that would be, be an odd thing to name your child simply because you had pain in childbirth. Ladies, how many kids would be named Jabez? Right? So there must have been some very difficult times ahead for this mother. Now, many believe, and I said I don't like to speculate, but many believe that the mother of Jabez had recently become a widow. That's why the father's name is not mentioned. And, uh, and it says that he had brethren. So here's mom who perhaps had no husband. These are difficult times. And along comes this child, uh, the last of her children. And could you, could you just imagine, could you imagine whatever the difficult times were, and she was in difficult times, and now she finds out she's pregnant, and now she's giving birth to another child. Could you imagine this mom being overwhelmed to say, what do I do now? What? What, what do I do now? And, and, and now I got another child to raise. You've caused me sorrow and pain. You get the picture? Whatever the circumstances were, this woman was overwhelmed. She names her child, he who causes me sorrow and pain. Now, my mother used to call me a little pain. <laughs> But that was for different reasons. That was a different story. His family was likely very poor because there's no notoriety. If his, if his family was of substance, we would have heard the name. We would have known the father's name. We would have known the mother. We would have known the lineage. But he, this family is of no notoriety. And so all we, we don't know his mom's name. We don't know his father's name. Just here comes Jabez in the middle of this whole story. But we read here that Jabez asked God that we, he would increase his possessions. I came from nothing, but God, I ask of you, please increase my possessions. Friends, sometimes life is really difficult. I don't ask for a show of hands. I, 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 I wouldn't be able to see past them. All the hands would be raised. Sometimes life is really difficult. And this mother, I don't, I don't fault her. I don't know her circumstances. I won't judge her. I just know that she, was, she felt overwhelmed and she expressed her sorrow. She expressed her grief, her pain in the only way she knew how. So she named the kid Jabez. Sometimes, friends, we're oppressed on all sides. We, and we have no visible evidence that things are going to get better. Have you ever been there? I don't know, maybe, maybe some of you are there now. Maybe some of you. Times are difficult. You're in difficult times. There's trials all around you. And there's no visible evidence that it's going to get better. And you're in a, and you're in a place where you, you just can't find hope. F hope is hard to find. But I, when we read this text, Jabez shouts to us, that what we can see on this side of eternity is not all there is. We believe we have hope in the Lord because of what he has promised us through Jesus Christ. And that promise is for all eternity. 
our eternal reward for keeping the faith is far greater than what we are experiencing on this side of life. Listen to me, friend. I don't know what your experiences are, your circumstances. I don't know where you've been, where, where you are, where you're headed. I just know this. What we see here and now is nothing compared to what God has in store for us in Christ Jesus. Amen. So Jabez, why does he stand out amongst everyone else? Because Jabez called on the God of Israel. To call on the Lord means to put one's trust in Him and in Him alone. Whatever the circumstances were that caused his mother to name him Jabez, he determined to rise above it. I'm called to one who causes pain and sorrow, but I am not going to allow that to stop me. You hear me? Friends, we need not be victims of our circumstances of our upbringing or, or whatever. Listen, I love to hear stories of people who were born in adverse conditions, adverse circumstances. Someone who was born in poverty. Someone who was born perhaps in the ghetto. Uh, maybe, maybe an orphan or of a single family home that they're, they're destitute, they have nothing. And to hear how they rise up out of that. How they go, they go and they get a good education. They become a doctor or, 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 or better. They, they rise up and they become people of notoriety. They become people of fame. And yes, even fortune. They're successful in life. I love to hear those stories, don't you? The Cinderella stories, as it were. We don't need to be victims of our circumstances. Listen, my father was an alcoholic. He abandoned my mother and four young children, ages five to nine. I was the youngest. And uh, my mother, I know that when my, the state came in and reviewed the situation and, and w were thinking about taking uh, her four kids away, but my mom decided that she would work six days a week. And she made arrangements. And, and, and this is Mother's Day, and she's not here right now, but I want to honor her nonetheless. She made a way for us. We never knew we were poor. One pair of shoes a year, a pair of pants and a shirt every year for school, and all the hand-me-downs my cousins could supply, but, but we made it. Our, 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 listen, we do not need to be victims of our circumstances. Listen, I caused my mother great sorrow growing up. Not as a child. In childbirth, I imagine I did. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't aware at the time. <laughs> but I know that I caused my mother great sorrow and pain later on. In, in my teen years, I was Jabez. <laughs> but somebody was kind enough to come to me. Somebody was kind enough to share with me the gospel of Jesus Christ. Someone was kind enough to go out of their way, out of their comfort zone, to tell me, first of all, to warn me about the path I was on. Because friends, that's where the gospel begins. Jesus loves you is wonderful, but it, but it doesn't mean anything until you first understand why you need him. And somebody told me, listen, Dude, the road you're on is, 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 is on, you're on the road to hell. And unless you, you get off that road, they told me in my destiny. And then they shared with me the love of God. They shared with me the gospel of Christ. They told me about a loving Savior who came to die in my place to take my shame and my sin to the cross. And if I could only put my faith in Him... I would be born again, I would have eternal life. And Christ came into my life, changed my life, saved my life, and more importantly, saved my soul. Amen. And my mother, who I caused so much grief. <laughs> Listen, when, when she doesn't know where I am or, or what I'm doing or when I'm coming home or if I'm coming home and how, what state I'll be in if I do come home, when all of a sudden she sees her Jabez walking uprightly, you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden I'm a citizen. <laughs> And when she saw the change in me, it didn't take much for her to realize there is a God who loves my son enough to change him. 
And she came to faith in Christ because of what God had done in her Jabez. Amen. Listen, I'm sure Jabez's mother was blessed in the end. We don't know. Again, we speculate. But here is a young man who she, listen, she didn't give much hope for the guy, right? But Jabez refused to allow his past to determine his future. And the Bible says that he was more honorable than his brethren. Now listen, nothing is said about his brethren to disparage them. It doesn't say that his brethren were dishonorable. Only this, that he was more honorable than they. What would make the difference? What would cause him to be considered more honorable than his brethren? Friends, he cried out to God where his brethren didn't. He cried out to God. And, and this honor, this means he became a man of greater ability and nobility than his brethren. In other words, God, he cried out to God and God took this man and he raised him up. He raised him up into a position of notoriety. He raised him up into a position of honor above his brethren. God's word tells us that he honors those who honor him. If we'll honor God, he'll honor us. If we'll honor God, he'll raise us up as well. Amen? The truth is, we're all in the same place as Jabez. The only hope in this life, and certainly in the one to come, is in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other hope. We have no other hope aside, aside from him. Listen, the language here expresses that Jabez didn't just call on God one time. He didn't just say, oh God, help me. No, the language here tells us that he made prayer a lifestyle. See, most people, maybe I shouldn't say most, many, many most, it kind of <laughs> teeters on the edge there, will cry out to God in an emergency. When everything is falling apart, oh God, help me. And that's fine too, but where were you yesterday? And where are you going to be tomorrow? Jabez, this, this wasn't a one-time thing. Jabez cried out to God as a lifestyle. Jabez lived crying out to God, seeking God, looking to the Lord on, on every hand. Listen, this was his lifestyle, and he understood his total reliance on the God of Israel. Just as Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7. Listen, Jesus said, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And those of you who are Bible scholars, you know the language there in the Greek is, is an ongoing. Listen, Jesus was saying, Ask and keep on asking. Mm -hmm. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. And, and, and you'll find, and the door will be opened, and you'll receive, and he'll answer. It's a continuous thing. Now, let me, let me caution you. He also said, in Matthew chapter 6, and verse 7, not to pray in vain repetition. Some people say, well, there's a contradiction. Jesus says to continually pray, and pray, and seek, and ask. But he also said, don't be vain in, in your repetitious prayers. What he means is this, friends, like, and, and he says in that text, don't, don't pray vain repetitions as the heathen do who think that they'll be heard of God because of their much speaking. I just keep saying more and more and more prayers. I just keep reciting the same prayer over and over and over and over again. Then God is going to hear me reciting my prayers and he's going to be happy. Jesus said, don't do that. That's what the heathen do. But... We can, when we come with a heart open to him, when we come with a genuine heart saying, oh my God, I need you. And as we sang, oh my God, I want you. I want to know you. I want to see you. I want to hear you. Lord, I need you. Then come and come and come again. God wants us to come to him in that respect. A heartfelt supplication. The word is called the importunity. Keep on coming. Friends, are you, are, you need, are you needing something of God? Then keep on coming and keep on asking and keep on seeking until he answers. Amen. His delay is for a reason. I don't know. 
Friends, but our, greater, our greatest need is for salvation. Regardless of how our lives are lived. Listen, some people are born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Others are born with a bottle of Michelob in their, in their mouth. <laughs> some people are born in prosperity. Some people are born in poverty. Some are born in, in a two-parent home. Some are orphans. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter your status, your, your financial status, your position in life. It, none of those things matter, friends. We're all born in sin. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every last one of us. And there is absolutely nothing we can do about it. You with me? Amen. I have your attention? Yes. This is incredibly important that we understand. Here's what the Apostle Paul said in writing to the church at Ephesus. He said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We're lost. We're born in sin. And there is absolutely zero we can do. Paul says that it's by grace. Do you know what grace is? Unmerited, unearned favor. Nothing you can do to receive grace. If there was anything you could do to receive it, it wouldn't be grace. So it's by God's grace, through faith, by believing and receiving that. And the faith is a gift of God. So you can't wake up one day and, and, and have your own faith. No, it comes as a gift from God. And Paul goes on to say, not of works. Because listen, if I could get to the place where I do enough and, and I, I'm going to be saved today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out and I'm going to work and I'm going to earn my way into, into then, then I could boast in my own ability to save myself. And Paul says, you can't. It's by grace through faith alone. And that faith is a gift from God, not of works. You can't boast. And then he wrote to the Galatian church, and he says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. You, 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 uh, nobody is justified by our religion. He said, no, nobody, no flesh, no man but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Can I hit the nail one more time? Romans 3.20, again, the Apostle Paul writing, he says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. In other words, the only thing the Ten Commandments taught us is that we can't keep the Ten Commandments. The only thing the law ever showed us is that we are sinners and in desperate need of a Savior. So if we keep trying to keep the commandments in order to be saved, it's the works of the law and no, no flesh could be justified by the works of the law. Listen, grace received by faith which is a gift you with me? Amen. But a gift is no good at all. Listen, he's given us the gift of faith so that we can believe and, and lay hold upon the grace of salvation. But unless we take the gift, it means absolutely nothing. If I told you I had a gift back here all wrapped up with a ribbon and your name on it, and it's yours, and I paid a lot for it, and it's, it's for yours, for you to keep. Until you come up here and take it in your hands, it's not yours. You, you don't benefit at all by the gift. Salvation was given as a gift by grace through faith. And that gift of faith, unless you use it, unless you take it, the gift that God has given means absolutely nothing. It's not yours until you take it by faith. Listen, friends. It couldn't be more clear. I could go on and on. It couldn't be more clear in the scripture of how salvation is by grace alone through the works of Jesus Christ and not our own. Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. That's past, present, and future. Listen, he died. The sins that I committed that caused my mother such grief, they're under the blood of Christ. 
The sins that I'm committing and may commit today, God help me not to, but, and the sins that I'll commit tomorrow and, and for the rest of my life and yours too, and every person that's ever lived, every single sin of deed and, and, and misdeeds and no deeds and thoughts and every single one of them was nailed to the cross by Jesus Christ. He took them all. Every last sin, all the sin of mankind, he took to the cross. For us to say, well now I, I have to do some work in order to earn my keep. I, have to, I just sinned, now I have to do some, some works to, to tip the scales. Friends, think about this. Almighty God, eternal God. In his eternal plan for salvation, sent his only son, the son of God, God in the flesh, to give his life to cover, to take every single sin for the whole world upon himself. And then for us to say, that was not good enough. It was insufficient. I still have to do more to, get, to keep my salvation or to be saved. Do you understand what that means? Paul said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's nothing more we could do. Jesus on the cross, when he was dying, said, it is finished. It's done. Jabez called on the Lord. And his prayer was fourfold. I'll go through this quickly. Hey, I forgot my watch. <laughs> Somebody will remind me what time it is. <laughs> the prayer of Jabez. I never read the book, The Prayer of Jabez. I know it, maybe if you did, you probably have other insight, but I just want to share with you quickly what I, what I saw. First of all, Jabez prayed. He said, God, he said, oh, that thou would, wouldest bless me indeed. He's pray, praying for God's favor and blessing. God wants to bless us. Friend, God wants to bless us. He loves to bless his children. Listen, the psalmist said, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Again, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Jabez said, bless me indeed. This is importunity. What he was saying in essence, if I could paraphrase, if I could put it in, in my own words, he was saying, as unworthy as I am, I'm Jabez after all. But God bless me nonetheless. Remember the story of Jacob. Jacob who wrestled with the angel of the Lord and said, I will not let thee go until you bless me. God, I, I don't want to continue to be Jacob. I don't want to continue to be a liar, cheater, conniver. I don't want to continue in my old life. God, you got to do something. Change me. I don't want to be Jacob any longer. And God changed Jacob into Israel and said, from now on, you're no longer Jacob. And Jabez is praying the same thing. God, I can't. I need your blessing. Bless me indeed. Friends, there's an urgency in this prayer. Listen, I am nothing, I come from nothing, I have nothing. My only hope is in you, Lord. That's a prayer of humility. Jabez came before the Lord in humility. God, please bless me. Friends, we all need the blessing of God. We all need divine favor. God sent his son to redeem a lost race. What greater blessing can there possibly be than to be brought back into fellowship with the Almighty God. The Bible says our sin separated us from Him. Christ came to restore us, to bring us back into fellowship. What greater blessing could there be than the salvation that Christ has provided? But that blessing is reserved solely for those who will come to Jesus in faith. Can I say that again here? Because if you don't hear anything else I say, this, th this should be written in red, bold letters in, in, in my notes. But, but listen, that the blessing of our salvation is reserved solely for those who will come to Jesus in faith. 
Like the blind man on the road to Jericho when Jesus is headed. Uh, there's a crowd that gathers because Jesus is coming. And there's a blind man. He's been blind his whole life. And there he is in the crowd. He can't see. But he hears. He hears that Jesus is coming. He knows enough to know that Jesus can help him. And he cries out, Jesus, thou son of David, help me. And the crowd tries to shut up. Be quiet. Don't you know who he is? Be, be still. And the man cries all the more, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Look, friends, I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what anybody says. If I know I could receive the blessings from God, there is nothing that's going to stop me from crying out to him. Amen. And he's present today as he said he would be. Whatever your need is, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Listen, Jesus stopped when he heard the cry of this man. Uh, how, many, how many people were there? How many tens or hundreds or thousands? I don't know. But Jesus, and, and, the, and the crowd must have been shouting. And, but he heard the voice of one crying in faith, Jesus, help me. And Jesus stopped and looked upon the man and healed him. And he'll stop to listen to our cry this morning. If you cry out to him, he'll stop and listen to you. And we need, not only do we need salvation, but we need the continued favor of God. We walk in the favor of God as we walk in faith. Can I have a few more minutes? And so he said, Lord, God, please, that you would bless me indeed, and that you would enlarge my coast. Strange terminology, expand my territory. This isn't a prayer of greed or uh, necessarily. It's not a He's not just saying, oh God, give me more. Or it could be, listen, it, God expand my territory, Lord, give me more. If our heart is a heart of greed, it, it, we, we could be praying a greedy prayer. I want more stuff. God, just give me more stuff. I want more stuff. Then that's a greedy heart. But that's not, this isn't the man's cry. It's perfectly acceptable when it comes from a heart of faith. Listen, Lord, he's saying, Lord, please broaden my horizons. In other words, Lord, I want to be all that you want me to be. I'm Jabez. Take me from this place, God, and do with me as you will. I want to be what you want me to be. Broaden my horizons. Listen, friends, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And he owns all the gold and all the silver and all the earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It all belongs to him. There is absolutely no reason that any child of God should ever go without. I'm not talking about living high in an ivory tower. I'm not talking about, you know, having a three-car garage and, uh, you know, and, and all the fancy things of life. But there's no reason any child of God should ever go without when our Father owns everything. And, but I believe there's a spiritual horizon here as well. I believe it is more important for our spiritual coast to be expanded than our earthly property. We, listen, we have just scratched the surface of what could be ours in Christ. Hear me. We have just, in, in our Christian walk, we have just scratched the surface of what God has in store. If we'll cry out to him and come to him in faith and say, Lord, broaden my horizons, expand my territory. We've, we have no clue how much God has in store for them who call upon him. Listen, God wants us to be free. He wants us to live in liberty. Jesus said, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Paul said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God wants us to be filled with His Spirit. We sang again, come Holy Spirit. I, God wants to come and fill us with His Spirit. A Spirit of life, liberty. Where this Spirit is, there is freedom. There is if you don't know spiritual freedom, you can today. Just call on the name of the Lord. Still with me? Amen. And then he said, Lord, and that thy hand would be with me. That your hand would be with me. His presence. His hand is his presence. The hand of God is God in power on our behalf. 
Think of the hand of Jesus. What mighty works were done. He touched the leper and the disease left. He touched the dead and they were raised to life. He reached out to Peter when he was sinking in fear and he saved him. In fact, John said in the book, on, on the end of his gospel, he said all the books in all the world couldn't contain all the things that Jesus did if we were to attempt to write them all down. The hand of Jesus, wherever, he's, wherever he reached, wherever he touched, miracles took place. And we can pray this same prayer today, that thine hand may be with me. It's just what we need, friends. We need him with us in all his glorious power. His hand is also protection. Why should Christians fear when we're, when we're in God's hands? Oh, I've, all I've heard for the past year is fear. Fear, I see it in people's faces, I hear it in their talk, I see it in their actions. Fear, people have been made so afraid. Friends, what do we need to fear when we're in the hands of Almighty God? Amen? Amen. Amen. Fear not. We have no reason to fear. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Jesus said, nobody is going to pluck us out of his hand, and no one is going to pluck us out of the Father's hand. We are in his hand. And we're safe in his loving hands. And then Jabez says, and Lord also, would you keep me from evil? Divine deliverance. Now perhaps this came out of his early beginnings. Perhaps it came, perhaps he became an overachiever. You know, <laughs> remember, I'm Jabez. You know, um, mom said I wouldn't amount to much. <laughs> so maybe he, maybe he endeavored from that point on. I am going to become something. I'm, go I'm going to ask God to use me, expand my territory, broaden my horizons, and, and I need him to keep me from evil. Listen, he came from a place of sorrow and pain. He came from a bad place. I, I can hear him say, dear Lord, please keep me from going back to where I was. God raised him up to a place of notoriety, to a place of nobility. I don't ever want to go back to being Jabez. I don't ever want to go back to be the one who causes sorrow and harm. Friends, I don't, me, I don't ever want to go back to where I was. I don't ever want to go back to the place where I was before when, when Christ found me. I don't ever want to go back to the Jabez that I was. It's like Israel going back to Egypt. I'm almost done. Evil is all around us. There's no getting out of it. Anybody think we're, we're living in Shangri-La? <laughs> There's evil all around us, right? It's everywhere. I, look, it is. We live in a fallen world and amongst a fallen race. God in his mercy has given us the only means of escape. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, Jesus taught us in the model prayer, for, you know, f familiar, familiarly called the Lord's Prayer. It's really not the Lord's Prayer because he was teaching us how to pray. It's the believer's prayer taught by the Lord. But it's the model prayer that Jesus gave us. And he taught us in the model prayer to ask the Father daily to deliver us from evil. Well, let me ask you, or let me say this to you, friends. As, as much as we need to be delivered, as a child of God, we have been delivered from the evil one. But keep yourself from evil. And the best way to be delivered from evil as a child of God is to avoid it in the first place. I'm not home. Avoid it in the first place. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 16 says, Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Paul said, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. 
Now, if we're lost, if we don't know Christ, do, we can't come out because we don't know how. We, 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 it, it's, it, it's not in our ability. But as a child of God, keep ourselves from evil, separate ourselves from the things of the world. And we we're talking about divine deliverance, being free and staying free. Jabez, he sought the Lord with all his heart, acknowledging his tremendous need for God's help. He asked for God's favor and blessing. And God granted him his request. It says it right there. It's a beautiful story. Comes from nothing. No hope. But he calls upon the Lord, and the Lord ra raises him up, makes him someone of nobility. Answered his heart's cry. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. See, friends, it doesn't matter where you began. If you began in the ghetto, if you began in poverty, if you began, if you were Jabez, it doesn't matter where you were, it doesn't matter where you've come from, it doesn't matter what you've done. None of those things matter. Only, the only thing that matters is where you end up. Don't allow the, your, don't be a victim of your circumstances. Don't allow your past to dictate your future. Wherever, you could rise up. If you call upon the name of the Lord, if you call out to him and trust, God bless me, Lord keep me, God multiply, my, broaden my horizons, Lord use me for your glory, keep me from evil. God will. God honored Jabez above his brethren. The Bible tells us that God honors them that honor him. Are you, are you willing to honor the Lord today? Call upon Him and trust in Him. Lord God Almighty, I love You. Jesus, I worship You. God, words can't express our gratitude for where, where You found us, where You knew we were, where we were lost. Father, we know the Word of God says that we were born in sin. In sin did my mother conceive me, David said. God, I know. The wages of sin is death. I know, Lord, we were separated from you because of our own sin. And no works of our flesh would have made us justified in your sight. Only by Jesus Christ and his precious gift of salvation. Lord, uh, we're reminded, uh, when we think of this man Jabez, starting out with nothing, with no hope. Lord, little uh, hope did anybody give him. But he called upon you, Lord. He cried out to you. He trusted in you. And Lord, you raised him up. You changed his life. And you gave him a place in Scripture for us to read and see. And Help us, Lord, to mimic. Help us, Lord, to follow the example of Jabez. To call upon you, Lord God. And Lord, I know that you are faithful to raise up anyone. As Paul said, anyone who calls upon your name will be saved. So, Father, as we close this service, this Mother's Day service, I first and foremost ask you to bless the mothers here and those that are listening. The job of a mother, Lord, the, 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 the incredible um, sacrifice that they make. Lord, we bless our moms and we ask you to bless them. Lord, I pray if there's anyone that's hearing me that has never came, come to that place of surrender, never realizing that it's only through Christ not through our works, not through religion, not through the law, but only through Jesus Christ can a person be reconciled to you. I pray, Lord, it was clear enough. I pray, God, that your word would speak and your Holy Spirit would reveal your word to their hearts, and that they'll acknowledge you as Lord of their lives and Savior of their souls. And for my brethren, Lord, for the children of God who have already come to you, Lord, I pray, that we will surrender ourselves as Jabez, that we will seek you daily, and Lord, that we will ask that you will do with us as you will. I pray, God, you take this message, and I pray that you use it for your glory, and bless this day and our moms, and we thank you for these things, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day, moms. We're going to sing.